when you're when you're finally like w- getting out of the fighting ring and going into the media, like was there ever a process for you where you've been a fighter your whole life, whether it's been professionally or non professionally, and now you're going into something completely different? Like, was there a piece of your identity that you're like, ah, I, I feel like I'm losing something of myself? No, not really, because honestly, I feel like that fighter version of myself. I, I guess if I, you know, he's still in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. But I'm a different guy these days, completely. You know, I mean, I was, you know, it was definitely a personality flow when I was younger. I was always getting into fights, and that kind of became my, my identity, my badge of honor. That's who I was. And when I was younger, that's kind of like how I ended up getting friends and being popular and hanging out with the cool guys and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that only further reinforced it, being this bad boy image, if you will. Yeah. And then when I got to the UFC, you know, I guess again. It's it's making me money. It's making me f- famous or whatever. Um, but now I've matured. I've grown up, and I'm certainly not fighting anymore. And that kind of version of me is, doesn't really exist anymore. And mm. I don't find myself being combative at all. You know, I still work out. I still train every day. Um, like for example, there's been two occasions recently where I have been assaulted in the streets and done nothing about it. F- full on punched in the face, and I could. I could have made mince me of these two assholes. Trust yeah. me. I was in New Orleans. I was in New Orleans. That's where, yeah, that's where they get you. I was in New yeah, Orleans yeah. and I'm walking down Bourbon Street. I've never yeah. been there before. Don't want to go back. Bourbon Street is a shithole. No offense. I got <laughs> no, assaulted. Your place yeah. sucks. I got assaulted. Do you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Uh, and then I'm, I'm with my wife and there's a bunch of yeah, young guys like playing on their upside down buckets right mm. and playing drums and oh, stuff yeah so I've, i'm doing a little touristy thing i'm filming a little instagram story this guy gets in my face he's like you can't film i'm like yeah i can it's a it's a public place <laughs> and i carry on filming he says yo i ain't gonna tell you again you can't film i'm like yes i fucking can and i carry on filming and he gets right in my face i said suck my fucking dick and he just goes fair play to him <laughs> <laughs> Fair play, fair play. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I said, suck my fucking dick. And he just went, boom, and punched me. I was there with my wife and my youngest son, who, what was he, like 10 at the time or something. But the punch was so pathetic. It, li- it literally, at my reaction, I laughed my head off. God damn, and that's the most disrespectful shit ever. This is not me trying to sound tough. It literally yeah. was like, ding. And I, just, I said, what was that? I said, did you just punch me in the face? I said, is that? I said, you come up, you talk all that shit, and you punch me in the face, and that is what you have to offer? I said, come on, but Adam was laughing my head off, so we just walked That's away. Amazing. What did he do? Because he had to swing and kind of get ready. So, so I have a YouTube channel, and my yeah. most watched video is because, because I do a podcast as well, and this guy put a video out because he found out who I was afterwards. So I, t- I took his footage and used it, integrated it onto my video. It's my m- most watched video. But his version of events is exactly the same as mine. <laughs> it's exactly the same. He didn't lie. Do you know yeah, what I mean? He says, oh, he left yeah, he said, I told him to stop filming and he wouldn't film. So he like told me to suck his dick. So I punched him in the face. <laughs> I'm like, see, I told you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then recently, I've never spoken about this before. I was, I was, I was back home and in Clitheroe, where I'm from. And um, I was at dinner with my mum, who's almost 80 years old. She can't walk, she's on crutches. And with my sister, she's got new, a newborn baby. It's a beautiful summer's night. There's about 12 of us, a very nice family atmosphere. It's like 5.30 p.m. And uh, I'm sitting there, and these guys walk in. I say, guys, they're, they're like 60 years old, old drunk bums walking, hammered drunk. And uh, one of them just walks over to me, he says, you don't remember me, do you? And like, whenever I go back, there's always old faces that I can't remember the names. But I'm like, right. hey, hello, well, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. But I can't, I said, oh, yeah, 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 good to see you. He said, you don't remember, do you? I said, oh, well, I don't remember your name, but yeah, your face is familiar. He says, no, let me give you a reminder. And I've got a scar between my eyes where I got a big metal stool smashed in my head when I was about 17 and then 20 guys jumped on my head. He says, look at that, you know that scar between your eyes? I did that. I said, right. I said, I, I think you need to walk away. So he goes away and uh, they sit down the other side of the restaurant and it comes to the end of the night. I'm paying the bill and I'm standing by the front door and then they walk past again and they start talking more shit. I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm here. I don't know who you are. I don't remember it. This was 1997, by the way. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Right. We've all moved on with our lives. And you think he'd at least know like what you became. Well, he did. So that's what he's doing it. So anyway, as I'm talking to one guy, the other guy sucker punches me and he has a ring on, explodes my nose. 
Do you know what I mean? And then as he hits me, he falls on the floor, right? And they're just hammered drunk and I'm standing there and I'm just like, oh God, I could fuck you up so easily right now. Yeah. But I just didn't do anything. Didn't do anything, right? Because yeah. I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not no. lowering myself to that. I'm not coming back to my hometown where I used to always be getting in fights. And they say, oh, Michael Bisping's back. He's only been back two minutes. He's already getting into fights. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah. not perpetuating that. No one knows who this guy is. Because, uh, I, well, it's not just that. I'm not that guy anymore. That was yeah. the whole point of this. I'm not that guy anymore, you know? Um, when in your mind did it shift that I'm not going to be that guy anymore? I'm not that guy oh, anymore. No, when I was in prison. But still, when I was fighting and I was younger. yeah, you know, yeah. I, but, but when I retired, because I see myself back on old, like old promos and stuff, and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> he's, he's that guy. He's that guy. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, Jesus Christ. So, how did your mom react to that? Um, you- well, they couldn't believe it. I walked in and my nose was all bloody. Mm-hmm. And they were like, what has just happened? You were only paying the bill. <laughs> Drama follows you everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, my, my, my mom's. She, she's seen it before. Yeah, she's seen it before. When you uh, when you retired, was there a thought of you? There was there a part of you that's like, I, I want to retire, but I want to go out with a win. I want to go out on top, Something. not on top, but I want to go out with a win. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Because um, I was going to fight again as well uh, against Richard Evans. We were going to have a rematch, but for one reason or another, it never happened. And then an old friend of mine said to me as well. He said, he said, Michael, what are you doing? And I said, Well. And then my manager, Audie, as well. There was a few people. I said, well, I want to go back to London. I want to fight the O2 Arena one last time. And I want to thank the audience. And I want to have that moment where you take your gloves off and you put it down and you thank the, the, the crowd and thank you for all the support over the years and all the rest of it. And it was Audie, actually. My manager, he's like, yeah, but you're romancing that in your head. You know, he said, you've got one eye. Do you want to go blind? Do you want to risk going blind? Because the fight before that, when I fought Gelvin Gastelum, because every time, because I used to cheat the the tests, mm-hmm. okay? They're not that hard to cheat if 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 you're a little scallywag like I was growing yeah. up. Um, they're not that hard to cheat, right? But the doctors used to always say, you know, you've been very, you know, um, risky still fighting because if anything happens to you, good eye, you know, you could go blind. I was like, yeah, it's fine. And I was like, well, Lightning's not going to strike twice. That was my logic, Mm -hmm. right? It's already happened in one eye. The odds of that happening on the second eye is minimal. It's not Mm -hmm. going to happen. Well, when I got knocked out in China, afterwards we went to a nightclub and we're sitting in there and and my eye just kept going, flashing. Every time I looked left, it would give a flash. And I thought, oh my God, because I remember the symptoms when I had the detached retina the first time. So uh, that was why... You know, I, I kind of wasn't going to fight again. But then I wanted that that send off, you know right, what I mean? Right. And he, he reminded me of that. I said, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You want to go blind? He said, for what? Some some idea, some theory that you've got in your mind, this, this whole big romantic send off. He said, you're being stupid. I thought, you know what? You're absolutely right. 